Hello everyone, Mike here with the Blue Vintage. Today what I wanted to talk about is the inside of a vacuum tube. These things are really cool, and I've always been fascinated by them, but I've never been able to safely open one of these because, well, they tend to explode. They're under such high vacuum that they just throw shards of glass everywhere, and I don't feel like dealing with that. So, when I made a pickup the other day, two pickups actually, two different devices, um, one of which I never intended to actually use. The other I would like to rebuild eventually and, and resell. Uh, but the one of those is a radio carcass that had this guy plugged into it. Yay, the job's been done for me. So, the other one is this guy. And I'll get to him here in a minute. Um, but this guy was in a portable radio that uh, obviously I'll be replacing this vacuum tube. And doing my usual work to it before I resell it. So let's start with the components inside this vacuum tube. So you got your, your connection here. This is uh, this is a, and this is where the the wiring is run through and goes down into the base where it then connects to your pens. Here is your your getter pen, and the getter is after you've pulled out all the air in here or all the air that you can pull out with a vacuum pump. There's still air in here, so we've got to pull that out with the getter. So we heat that getter up and it vaporizes and condenses on the outside of the vacuum tube. That's this metallic thing that you see, this metallic piece right here that you see in, on every vacuum tube. That doesn't mean the tube's burned out. That just means that it's working properly. So this vacuum tube has its getter and we can read the, the condition of the vacuum tube by looking at the getter. The getter will look silvery, it'll look rainbow colored, or it'll look black. Those are normal conditions. So this one's got the silver, it's got the, the blacky, you know, black colored bit here. Uh, it doesn't really have, I don't have a tube with the, the rainbow sort of color, but I've encountered them before. But then you've got this guy here. That's, that's a bad condition. That is barium oxide. It's a very good indication that the tube ha no longer has vacuum. Go figure. Um, so this tube has no vacuum on it. And if you see that sort of color on your getter, don't plug it in. It'll fry. It'll fry anything it's plugged into. Moving on, you've got your, your connections, and then you th these two here, and these two here. You'll notice there's actually two physical structures in here. These two wires and these two wires are for your filament. It's a tungsten filament. It's this guy hanging out the bottom. You can kind of see that white hanging down there on the white up here. That's your filament. That's what heats your cathode up to operational temperature, which is usually 17 to 1800 degrees Celsius. Uh, and then your cathode, which is a shiny metal, and a shiny metal, that is what's giving off electrons. And then it passes across the gap between the cathode and your anode, the black piece here. This is called the cath or the anode or the plate. You'll usually hear vacuum tube anodes referred to as a plate. Uh, so if you hear the, the term plate voltage or uh, plate bias or uh, th that sort of thing, uh, I guess cathode bias would be correct in that instance, but um, it, that, that's, that's what they're referring to is this black piece here. Um, so this is what's receiving electrons, and we, we code it with the material to keep electrons from bouncing off and going back to your cathode or back to other grids if you've got grids in the way. Now this one doesn't have any grids. It's a diode meaning you've got your cathode, your anode, and that's it. <clears throat> now this one was most likely a full wave rectifier. This takes an AC signal. So you've got your upside of the AC signal and your downside of the AC signal that are both being turned into a direct current signal. Um, this is important because pretty much any device requires direct current at some point in time in its, in its use, uh, in its uh, functionality. Um, so you, you will almost always have a rectifier of some kind. Obviously, they're much smaller now um, because this, this guy was pretty big. Um, but they're, they're much smaller now, thankfully, and uh, they we don't use vacuum tubes for that anymore. Next is I've actually torn a vacuum tube with grids open so you can see it. Again, here's your plate. This guy is uncoated. Maybe. I think. It doesn't seem to be coated at any rate. Um, and then you've got your, your getter pan. You can see where the where the barium powder was. I'm not going to touch that because that's dangerous. Um, then you've got your your grids, which are just coils of wire that are electrically charged. 
each coil can each grid can be charged a different way to do different things. <clears throat> so this is what's called a pentagrade converter. This is the the radio tube that is it's a radio tube that basically takes your your input uh, radio frequency that you selected with your tuning dial and generates an oscillator with the outer two grids and then amplifies that signal that's come in through the antenna and feeds it off to another to another tube that um, that uh, then amplifies the new frequency so the oscillator and the the internal frequency mix together to provide or to, to generate the intermediate frequency or IF um, and, and then there, there's a number of other steps that happen here but that, that's basically what this tube would do um, was was the first step in, in radio radio interpretation then on top and bottom we've got mica plates these are anti-vibration uh, devices that, that keep the vacuum tube still within its envelope and keep it from bouncing around. You don't want the tube to be, you know, flying all over the place, or you you get what's called microphonics, where the vacuum tube is actually acting like a microphone. Um, it sounds terrible. It's very very it's it's awful sounding. Uh, you don't want that. So we have these mica plates on top and bottom to help keep the vacuum tube stable and in one location. Uh, and obviously these things get loose over time, so they become microphonic, and now the, the, the mica piece becomes a microphone. And then you've got your top terminal connections, and then your wiring down there, just like we had what we had with this guy. And said, and said this guy is recessed to save space. See how much smaller that is? So if all the wiring is down in here, you don't have this massive base and then this massive this massive wiring bundle here and then all that and it, it's it miniaturizes so yeah that is the inside of a vacuum tube incredibly simple for what they are and yet so cool anyways mike out